Hey, what's going on, guys? Alex Rich and on, guys? your weekly fishing report. A lot of great news this week. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's fall, it's here, and it's popping off right now. Most of us really look forward to the fall fishing. Yes. It's a lot of fun to be out there. Fish are still around. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, it starts getting cold. Kids are going back to school virtual school, school yeah. but they're going back to school. <laughs> Football starting. Don't ignore the fish. They're still oh, yeah. out there. It's, it's great, awesome fishing. Personally, one of the best signs for me and yeah. you know it's comfortable too because it's a little bit cooler too Absolutely. so Absolutely. Uh, but yes let's start off with some rock fishing uh, uh, out here it's been actually been getting better all around yeah I mean we're talking like we mentioned last time you just got to choose what you want to do yeah. and you know you'll catch them uh, but shallow water slash jigging has been pretty productive this past week a lot of reports in shallow water everybody's getting that kick to go with top water fishing in shallow mm -hmm. or just near structure and that's actually been really productive in most of your common areas but one of the areas that's standing out the most is still the north side yes on the bay bridge you know anywhere pretty much bay bridge and really far north i mean we had a tournament this past weekend and most of the reports were that most of those people stay literally around the middle river area pulse island hodges bar i think the most uh, south most people went in that tournament was pretty much like the patapsco mm -hmm. producing a lot of fish trolling and also shallow water fishing in live bait too yep. which is one of the things that people kind of forget about this time of the year uh but yeah some of the hot areas up there were pulse island hodges bar uh seven foot no anything in the mouth of the uh, patapsco and also across at Rock Hall and, yep. you know, pretty much the mouth of the uh, Chester River. Yep. A lot of options there. I mean, it's wide open. Yeah, and in the fall, remember, we see a lot of breaking fish. So they're yep. pushing that bait up. There's a lot of manhattan balling mm -hmm. up out there. And those stripers are going to push those to the surface. So you want your poppers. You want your topwater mm -hmm. stuff. If you're trolling, you want those lighter baits because the fish are going to be a little bit right. higher in the water column. But be prepared if they do drop down. So you want to have those inlines and those double sinkers. snaps, adjust that weight, get them, get them into that middle of the water mm -hmm. column if, the, if you're marking those fish down there. So you want to have some options on the boat right. with your tackle. And like you just mentioned, your best friends are going to be having a different sizes of inline weights. Pretty yes. much. So that's you know the biggest key you want to have with that. So you can like you just mentioned, readjust. And people ask all the time, well, what size should I get? You want an assortment. Right. You want one ounce, two ounce, three ounce, four ounce, five yeah. ounce. I like carrying an assortment of sinkers because yes. you just don't know what the conditions are going to be, mm -hmm. where they're going to be. And it, it'll be different in the morning than it will be in the afternoon. So you have to be able to change on the fly. That's like having jig heads pretty much. We yep. have an assortment of jig heads anywhere yep. from, you know, quarter ounce to sure. one two, ounce, one and a half, ounces. two ounces. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And that's the thing. You know, it's not that there's uh, one answer to this. It's just adjusting to the conditions. Just being prepared. Yep. Uh, but besides that, you know, a couple of things people have been doing uh, with, you know, top water and around pretty much like the island of, you know, like Hartmill Island, uh, Pulse Island, all that, anywhere shallow where there's a close drop off to its top water baits. And, you know, this here, it's kind of like an old school thing, but it, it works. And it, most people kind of refer to this to almost like a popping cord. Yes. In a way, it functions almost the same way. Yep. You have your actual top water plug here that's mm -hmm. making all the commotion, and then you have a little trailer, you know, and you can have multiple things. Like we put a feather uh, jig on there, jig, yeah. it does a different motion as you're popping this through the water yeah. fish like that any kind of top water plug in shallow early in the morning and as we get later in the fall it's almost like an all-day thing oh yeah and you mentioned popping corks mm -hmm. you know, this is like a popping cork right. popping cork simply is just a float it's got a little rod that goes through it bangs around mm -hmm. and it's got the bait that follows suit the nice thing about doing this instead of a popping cork is we can leave that treble hook on the middle of the lure right so if we do get a fish that comes up and tries to pile on that lure we have a shot of catching right. them which is really nice so besides that, a couple of things that a lot of <clears throat> customers have been talking about, it's like, you know, I'm fishing in shallow, but I'm getting snagged. Or, mm -hmm. you know, I'm fishing along grass, but I'm getting all this grass in my jig head. Uh, there is a couple options. Uh, yes. A couple of those things is pretty much throw a, this is what you call a, uh, you know, pretty much um, so swim weighted. bait, yeah, weighted swim bait hook yeah. uh, with this little screw lock there where you can actually attach this, your bait. Mm -hmm. Most of the time I like to put a paddle tail on there so it's actually weedless. You rig it up and it stays weedless. Yeah. You can throw pretty deep into cover and be confident that you know, it won't get snagged or yeah. as much yeah. as, you know, just a regular jig head. And they're really easy to rig. You yeah. just take this screw that's on the end, this hitchhiker post that's attached, that comes with the hook. Mm -hmm. You just screw it directly into the nose. And then you rig that weedless that way. The, the, it stays on there. Right. It holds the bait really well. And it's not that difficult to rig. 
and there's a couple different weights but you know this is yep. perfect for fishing grass structure all of that stuff uh so like i said if you're fishing anywhere around the patapsco inside the patapsco there's all those old you know sunken boats and mm -hmm. all that stuff you can throw in there and get yep. some fish out of there yep. uh other than that you know there's a couple things you can do for a lot of people that use top water and they complain about treble hooks it's changing your hooks to uh those inline hooks yeah absolutely so these inline hooks if you actually take this hook you can see how that eye is if i take this treble hook off this hook will actually hang directly underneath mm -hmm. and replace that treble, which is a really, really nice feature. Really helps save getting that yeah. fish, especially with the, you know, the smaller fish being right. around. You do catch a couple of undersized fish. You want to be able to get this back in the water as quickly as possible. You don't want to get caught with those in your boat. So, yeah. And you don't want to have those treble hooks just swinging around. I mean, that's yep. what scares me yep. the most, honestly. Yep. Absolutely. And we got a couple uh, new rods, right, Rich? That we, we do. be perfect for that kind of stuff. So we got some of the new St. Croix Mojo Inshore. So they've mm -hmm. been redesigned. Beautiful new color. It's kind of emerald, shiny looking color to them. Uh, really, really nice rods. Tapers have uh, improved a little bit. So right. this is the seven, uh, the six and a half foot medium fast. Mm -hmm. It's a little softer than yeah. the previous versions. And we kind of like that. We kind of like that feel. It's got a little more flex in it, especially right. for working some of those lures like poppers mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, very, very lightweight, nice new componentry on them. Um, just a really nice looking rod. Um, so definitely want to come in and check some of those out. Yeah. We have a few models that have finally shown up. We'll have some more coming in. We did order a large assortment of them. Um, got a couple of the casting models. And the mm -hmm. casting models are a little on the heavier side. Yeah. That we have we had a medium heavy and a heavy. These are going to be really, really nice for snakehead. Snakehead. Uh, throwing for largemouth bass with frogs, you know, some heavier action rods. These will also be good for you guys that want to jig with a, a, a heavier rod right. with a conventional. Um, you know, for those that are fishing around the bridge with an ounce, ounce and a half. You can kind of pitch those baits underneath mm -hmm. of those those overpasses, the, those the, pilings, the, the yeah. pilings, those little abutment, the supports. Cast underneath of those, you can pitch them with a with a bait cast. Right. Works really well. So yeah, those are pretty awesome rods that we got mm -hmm. in. You know, they all apply to a lot of things we do yeah, around we're, here. We're so. really excited about all the new yeah. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, I mean, trolling wise, focus on your channel edges. Same thing. Uh, you know, focus on those areas where you know those uh, bait fish are going to congregate and come out of them. You know. Yep. Uh, rivers and whatnot same thing as you go south you you know the fishing for stripers has been picking up down south and mm -hmm. when i mean down south we're talking about pretty much anywhere between the annapolis area down towards deal yep. uh, a lot of people are focusing on the matthew eastern bay because you know that's a typical just perfect scenario for yep. all the bait fish to come out of yep. it's just a big great point. bottom contour yeah. you get good you know when the <clears throat> tides flowing in and out of there it's just mm -hmm. it's just a, a natural place to want to fish and then if you want to go in tight to poplar island that's been actually pretty productive yes. with all these lures we just talked about jigging wise you can jig throughout any water depth in reality you know you can go from in shallow to deep if you're fishing around the channel edges of course you want to adjust to depending on the current and you know um wind mm -hmm. tide all of that but that's been productive too and the bay bridge has been picking up here yeah i mean we heard of some nicer size quality fish in the pilings uh and live lining uh one thing that it's kind of like old school and everybody's kind of gotten away from is live lining eels yes and it's, that produces and it works great yes they love eels yeah strikers love eels remember now that the spot are kind of tapering it's off and in. all of that uh one great thing to do is just take a couple of eels and the great thing about eels is that they don't die yes yeah. yeah, they're pretty resilient <laughs> yeah they last forever yes yeah. yeah, so you can keep those things in there for a while and they yeah. won't die so they're a little more to handle but sure just put them in ice and they'll kind of stop moving so that, <laughs> that kind of covers stripers moving on to mm -hmm. to uh spanish mackerel yeah we're better better reports are coming from down south but there are the stragglers around we've yeah. been hearing a few in the magathy there's been a few in the severin uh, the there's been a, a couple you know here strays and here and there so definitely don't cross them off the list make sure you got those spoons and those inline planters um, take those along with mm -hmm. you um you know it's kind of nice to mix it up sometimes you, if you get your one fish change your gear out troll a little bit faster and see if right. you can pick off one of those stray guys before they're completely gone it's a, it's and the bluefish are everywhere lots of bluefish around still yeah, yeah. so Again, using those planters and mm -hmm. using those spoons, you might not catch a lot of mackerel, but you might catch a couple of uh, bluefish have, mm -hmm. just have a nice mixed bag. Yeah, that's been the reports for everywhere, like, you know, uh, tollies, pretty much, hackets, and across uh, to, you know, pretty much uh, Eastern Bay, it's been a lot mm -hmm. of bluefish. Yeah. Good size bluefish, too. We're not yeah. seeing... Yeah. Uh, really tiny ones there's been a lot of reports where it's like good enough for you know the bay where it's like 20 inch bluefish right you know, 25 inch bluefish which is great so that's been pretty good uh yeah. with that i mean perch fishing heading back into the rivers perch yeah. fishing in the shallow water around docks and water around around riprap mm -hmm. structure has been very good 
Um, we were out the other day and we caught some some pretty nice nice, nice perch. Found a couple of nice honey holes where we were picking them off left and right. Tried a bunch of different tactics. Mm -hmm. um, some of the, the lures that I like to use personally are going to be shad darts. Always a fan of a shad dart. I like rigging them in tandem. Um, you can tip these with some bust on baits, um, nail tails. I, I'm a big fan mm -hmm. of this. Uh, this thing's so amazing. Yeah, this this style bait, but more importantly, this color. It almost mimics a grass shrimp. Yeah. Perfect. Um, so those are great baits to use. Um, these little jig heads that we got in from Northland are on really nice when they have got these blades on them. So even if you just give a slow retrieve, mm -hmm. that blade just kind of sits there and whirls. It kind of twirls around. It's real flashy. Um, so I'm a big fan of those as well. Yeah. Fish them independently, or you can fish them in tandem as well. Uh, of course, you know, have your, your assortment of jig heads. And then, of course, some rooster tails. Uh, we got these kits in. Uh, the nice assortment of rooster tails comes in a little Plano box. You can load up with some other stuff if you want. Um, there's six of them in there. So, um, you know, nice little boxes kind of. Yeah, get pretty good colors in there, too. There are. Yeah, there so are, those yeah. are the hot ones. Uh, a couple other things, you know, that they're kind of, you know, catching around the area. It's still the puppy drum are still around. Yep. Uh, it seems to be that they're getting bigger and bigger as we, we go are, into yeah. the fall. Yeah, just um, under keeper size, but they yeah. are getting they're they're getting there. They're getting yeah, they're they're closer. almost at keeper size. So right, right. Uh, remember, it's got to be they got to be eighteen inches. Yes. So yep. you know that's uh, perfect size. And then we've been hearing a lot about some trout in the area mm -hmm. now, uh, all throughout the South River. While well, people are catching perch and one other by catching those mm -hmm. two. And also, pretty much uh, Tillman Point and uh, Poplar Island have been pretty productive. And not nothing crazy, but they're catching you know three or four nice size speckled trout. Sure, sure. Uh, a lot of things. So if you want to target them, will be you know smaller paddle tails like that, like we've spoken yep. of. And uh, you know they'll hit the jigs and some of those topwater plugs too. Yeah. So yeah, that's been pretty pretty productive. Now with uh, snakehead fishing, mm -hmm. uh, that's actually going to be one of those uh, things where it's going to pick up here soon. They're getting ready for the winter, so all they're going to do is feed heavy right, right. in this upcoming few weeks. Now, we're in that transition point for snakeheads, so this past few days with that colder temperature really kind of tapered them off, and they made them really sluggish, but you can still fish for them. Now, the biggest keys for the next few weeks is going to be to fish a little bit slower for snakehead. Uh, downsize your actual bait sizes. <clears throat> doesn't mean that you're not going to catch big fish. I will have actually caught some bigger fish on those smaller paddle tails like that. We have this new great jig head um, from Z-Man from Z-Man here, where it's a one eighth, you know, you don't want too much weight if you're fishing grass or even down in black water and you can just Texas rig them so you don't have to, you know, get all those weeds out of there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, downsize to smaller paddle tails, you're still gonna catch a lot of fish and good quality fish and also slower fishing means flukes. Yes. Uh, you know, it's, a, it's one of those ways where you can still cover water and move around, but you want to fish them a lot slower. Just around the grass edges, and this is from Savage Gear. This is pretty much a fancy fluke. It's just a little more uh, detail on there. Yeah, that TPE mud minnows are really, really cool, and you can really get some good, mm -hmm. good action twitching out of that. And I like the feathers that are stuck right. in the tail. You're gonna get that kind of nice twitch out of that mm -hmm. bait. It's gonna kind of, it's, it's kind of a, a, a stiffer plastic, so it's gonna twitch well, but that feather will kind of just kind of subtly move action. after it twitches. Yeah. That feather just kind of sits there and moves a little in the current. So it's got that subtle bit of action. Sometimes and that's their favorite too. color there too, that white. Oh, so yeah. they love that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, snakehead fishing, like I said, is going to turn more into a subsurface thing. Not much on top water, only on those small windows throughout the day. Mainly, you know, evenings mm -hmm. uh, at this point. But what should you picking up? Let's head down the bay. So yeah. Cobia. Cobia fishing. A lot of people have been going Cobia fishing. Mm -hmm. They're you know hunting and pecking. They're finding a few here and there. They're out there. So you know head a little bit farther right. south. We've been hearing somewhere on the target ship. Target ship and south the of there. Yeah, and yeah. You, you know once in a while you'll get one of those few that are still up by mm -hmm. settlements and yeah. all, all in that area. Patrolling's been uh, one of the things with, that everybody's doing just because cover you can cover water. Patrolling big circuit social mm -hmm. tubing. Yeah. And that the redfish are still kind of hanging in there too with them, but yeah. those fish are pretty much same thing moving south as yeah. as we speak pretty much. Well, let's move south to the beach. Yeah, get down now, to Ocean City, Assateague. Ocean City, and all that. Lots yeah. of blue fish, lots yeah. of you know snapper blues. Uh, that redfish, uh, you know, run is starting now. Mm -hmm. Had a few reports still from Assateague of you know those nice forty plus inch red drum that come through there, yeah. and most people are catching them with cut spot. Yep. Uh, or even live line and spot off the beach. Yep. Uh, of course, with that, they're catching a lot of sharks still. Uh, a couple sure. of them here and there and race. But, you know, one great thing to uh, rig to use for bluefish, it's one of those mullet Oh, one of my rigs. favorites. So the mullet rig is a great rig to use. Um, 
it comes pre-rigged. You can uh, just get the snap on there so you can add your sinker. And then off this float system, uh, you've got this metal wire. You pull this double hook off, you slide your mullet on, you put the yeah. double hook back in, you put a whole mullet on here so it's really going to entice mm -hmm. a much larger fish. You're not going to use a right. chunk of bait. You're going to use the whole finger mullet on this. Um, you know, and just tip that off with a pyramid sinker. Right. You get all that current, that turbulence, that pyramid sinker is going to help kind of hold bottom mm -hmm. a little bit better. Um, and what better to throw Ooh, we got the that another rod rod than another St. Croix rod. <laughs> so we've got the new redesigned Triumph St. Croix uh, Surf series. So the Triumph Surf has been redesigned. Um, same coloration as the Triumph Inshores, mm -hmm. the brand new Triumph Inshores. Uh, we've got a couple different models in. We've got some more on the way. We've got eight, nine, and nice. ten footers in stock. Um, nice cork grips on the bottom. Uh, similar to the way that they were in the past, right. um, but uh, definitely come in and give these a wiggle. These are these could be right. pretty rod to throw out there. And you know they're pretty much going to be covered you throughout the whole thing there with those sizes. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Plug into throwing you know yep. some of those rigs. Whether you're headed to any point, or yeah. you're headed up to Conway Dam, or you're headed down to the yeah. beach, those rods are definitely going to cover every, everything you need. And then you know besides that, they're still catching a decent amount of sheephead in shore mm -hmm. in the Ocean City, and same thing on the. Uh, rocks there on the inlets mm -hmm. and the bridges, so that's still mm -hmm. pretty good. And then a mix of black drum too. We sell a yes. little push of black drum mix in with them and uh, weak fish. You don't see too many yeah. of them, but yeah, there, there was a good run the past few days down there. We, we uh, decent sized weak fish, yeah. You know? So that's that's going to continue to get better probably down there. Crabbing has been doing pretty yeah. good still. It's a great time of the year to crab. It's not too cold. Just, you know, keep getting out mm -hmm. there and getting the crabs. Nothing like watching the ravens on Sunday afternoon and eating some crabs. Oh, yeah, All right. Um, so definitely nice and heavy crabs, yeah, nice thick heavy crabs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the crabbing's been very good. So definitely come in and stock up on your crabbing supplies for that. Yeah, and uh, besides that, uh, I think that's all we got for you guys this week. Yeah, uh, make sure to tune in next week and uh, you sure. know keep up with all the reports. Yeah, if you have any questions or concerns, any comments, please leave them in the, in the messages below, and uh, we look forward to seeing you guys when you stop in. Good luck out there. Have fun. Have a good one.